As we begin this week, let's start by talking about something that's non-COVID related. Imagine that, we are now not talking about COVID-19 as a lead story because we want to start this show by talking about this, the wrangles within the government. Uh, it's crazy what's happening and as we go into another 21 day curfew period, can we discuss why perhaps this is happening? On May 15th, an article in the Star newspaper in Nairobi asked a question and this was the headline, where is DP Ruto? The article goes on to state that, and I quote, Deputy President William Ruto has chosen to remain silent as President Uhuru Kenyatta crushes his allies uh, and planning to expand government. For weeks now, the DP is said to be holed up as an official Karen residence and having a good time with his family unperturbed. In the tweet, the DP appeared to be questioning the rationale for Uhuru, who is also the Jubilee Party leader, to engage in such political activities when the country is grappling with the effects of COVID-19 and floods that have killed and displaced many Kenyans across the country. His tweet read, and I quote, good people were in the middle of a corona pandemic, destructive floods, and a ravaging locust invasion. Many who have lost work, income, and livelihood are desperate and hungry. Let us reach out with food and all kinds of support individually where we're able and collectively as government of Kenya. He tweeted at some minutes to 10 a.m. on Monday. So what exactly is happening? Because while the president appears to be distancing himself from his deputy, he's begun to cozy up to his arch nemesis, right? Anyway, this is news we all have and there's nothing really new to say except that Ruto's silence kind of freaks me out. I don't know about you, but I preferred it when he was talking and loudly commenting on his ambitions. His lack of dialogue simply scares the shit out of me. Let's look at some of William Ruto's more cutting, shall we say, speeches. <laughs> Na kanisa hii imekuwa ya msaada sana kwangu. Pengine kama singekuwa mwana AIC, singekuwa na mke. Kwa sababu huyu nilimpata kule kanisani. <laughs> Ile tulifundishwa huko kwa Sunday School, kuhusu safari ya Kanan. Atukuambiwa kulikuwa na mamba, lakini sasa... Mwishiwa Prime Minister, angekuwa mwalimu mzuri sana wa Sunday School. Kenya sio nchi ya reggae, na bangi, na waganga. Kenya ni nchi ya mungu na maombi. Hii reggae, na bangi, na waganga, tutawakomesha Kenya hii. Tuondoe siyasa ya ukabila, na chuki, na kutengana, tuungane sisi wote, Tuwe geng moja kundi ya kuendesha maendeleo ya taifa letu la Kenya tukijenga daraja ya urafiki na undugu moja kwa wa Kenya wote It's crazy but they say keep your friends close and your enemies closer I'm just saying. Now, these two are sharing a meal together, and perhaps they should all get together and have a meal. I mean, everyone who's eyeing superpowers come 2022. Question you need to ask here is, who is the real Judas? Now, let's go back to COVID-19 because, man, I'm so sick and tired of not being able to go out after 7 p.m. It's a joke. Another 21 days began on Saturday, the 16th of May. Another 21 days of having to be inside the house at 7 p.m. But why? If you drive through Nairobi during the day, life is getting back to normal. So why are we being told we have to go home and stay there by 7 p.m.? Or maybe I'm just being a baby. There's a rumor out there that maybe, just maybe, we're being told to do this based on the fact that it keeps rallies from happening and church gatherings and large congregations. And therefore, there'll be no disruptions politically. I'm just saying, maybe, just maybe, there's more to this curfew business than meets the eye. We'd love to get your thoughts on this, so get in touch on our socials, which should appear right here. And while we're on the subject, is it possible that our leader could be stress eating? I mean, if you look back over the years, and I'm talking about the time that he was our finance minister, over the years, he seems to have packed on the KGs. And now in recent times, I mean, to be fair, he's done a pretty stressful job running a country that's completely in debt, owing a wad of cash to the Chinese, the same f who brought this little guy to the world, and the breakup of what was once seen as the bromance of the century. Remember when they dressed exactly the same, white shirts, red ties, rolled up sleeves? Such a shame, really. Plus, he must feel a bit like he's slumming it after breaking up with this sexy mother to get with an old guy, you know what I mean? Now, as the COVID cases continue to rise in Kenya, and as we continue to be under curfew for another block of days, it really is the uncertainty that weighs on us all, right? Cases continue to rise, and we're told that we're winning the war. But let's look again at the stats. As of Sunday, May 17th, we had 830 confirmed cases with 301 recoveries 
and an even 50 deaths. And while we feel pretty good about our results on a global scale, I mean, the whole world has seen 4.64 million cases with 1.69 million recovered and just over 300,000 deaths. But we've only tested around 30,000 people in a country with a population of 47 million. And maybe just maybe the president sees this too. And that's why we're locking doors and locking down for another 21 days and why our borders are being closed. But why are we only closing our borders with Tanzania now? A country whose president should be f- ashamed of himself for his handling of the pandemic. <laughs> Comparatively, his Ugandan counterpart did the exact opposite. He shut sh- down and then showed us how to exercise at home, providing your home as a palatial mansion reserved for a dictator. I mean, a uh, president. Good news is that Kenya's hoping to test 250,000 people by June, which is not that far away. That's right, Kenyan laboratories on the front line in the fight against coronavirus are stepping up their preparedness. At the Kemri Medical Research Institute in the capital Nairobi, researchers are tracking the virus with a range of new equipment. They're preparing samples in machines capable of testing several thousand people in a single day. Let's hope that this happens and we can get back to some sense of normality. That normality, my friends, it will be to learn to live with the virus because the sh- is simply not going anywhere. And if that doesn't scare you, then maybe, just maybe, my last story will. Here's something else for you to f- worry about. The COVID-19 pandemic has come as the last nail in the coffin of Kenya's oil export dream as currently structured after British oil major Tullow Oil served the government with a force majeure notice, which means that they can no longer deliver its part of the contract. This is now handed China, the biggest opportunity yet to snap up the oil deal after it emerged as a front runner in the race to buy off the Kenyan oil project from the struggling British firm. Ah, yes, we will owe them in every possible way very soon. Welcome to the People's Republic of Kenya. Well, that's going to wrap it up for Radio 54 this week. Remember to get in touch with us on all our socials. Have a great week ahead, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Farid. Today, I am all about porn, miniature dictators, and a magic potion from an exotic island. Now, working from home where possible has been the order of the day for a minute now. Miss Rona is forcing us to finally use the massive resource that is the internet to our full of potential. And with that, one particular video conferencing platform has become extremely popular, Zoom. The ease of setting up a meeting and the fact that it's free has made Zoom the go-to platform for that important status meeting, catching up with a few friends after a long day in your PJs, and even having a virtual wedding. But convenience and ease comes at a fee that isn't always monetary. Zoom bombing, as it's popularly known, is the newest challenge on our road to becoming fully functional work from home hamsters in the capitalist wheel. Hackers are joining Zoom meetings on anything from Alcoholics Anonymous gatherings, virtual classrooms, to high level government meetings to troll, shout racial slurs and profanities, stream hardcore porn, and worst of all, blast Bahati's music to participants. Remember like 10 seconds ago when I said that the government meetings were not safe? Well, the South African parliament learned that the hard way, pun very much intended, when their meeting was rudely interrupted by a stream of premium Pornhub content. The parliamentarians were gathering for the first time on a virtual platform to discuss the National Assembly's program, and then boom, hackers interrupted the nation building with porn and racial slurs aimed at the speaker, Tandi Modise. The meeting was immediately shut down and another one started about half an hour later. The most iconic part of the story though, the first agenda of their meeting was to discuss the safety implications of conducting parliamentary business on virtual platforms. I don't imagine this particular incident did much for their faith in virtual meeting technology, so it'll be interesting to see how they conduct their business in the coming weeks. In any case, the South African parliament is no stranger to drama. Dare I say, Zanzi's parliamentary proceedings are some of the most entertaining in the world. Trust me, you could watch this sh- in place of Netflix and chill and your date would still give it up. Not that I'm talking from experience. Don't believe me? Here are some of my favorite South African parliament episodes, mostly starring the economic freedom fighters Julius Malema and Buyisenin Ndlozi squaring up against fellow members of parliament, speakers, and even their former president, Jacob Zuma. Episode 1, The Pilot, where Mbuyisen Ndlozi calls out a minister for quite literally sleeping on the job. I'm worried that uh, this minister that we pay so much, Minister Maite Maite, she's sleeping in parliament, and with that position she's going to fall. Honorable. And the minister would have fall, she's still sleeping. Honorable member. She's still, I don't know, what's happening? 
That's not a point of order. Take your it's seat. Unacce no, no, no. The minister is sleeping. You can't say that's not a point of order. No, Josie, are you condoning people please. sleeping now? Josie, no. has we must come, come for to you. sleep here in parliament. Honorable self, proceed. We pay you. Don't sleep here. Hey, man. Episode 2, the mid-season finale where Julius Malema and his entire party are forcefully evicted out of parliament for coming after Jay-Z. We are asking you and asking this house not to allow the president to speak here up until there is a process to rehabilitate him. There must be a rehabilitation process which Zuma is subjected to. Honorable Ramini, Honorable Koza. And the season finale when Mbuyi in Dlozi needed Rick Ross to help him make a point. We are self-made. You're just affiliated. Self-made. You just affiliated. We built it ground up and you got it renovated. I built it ground up. You got it renovated. That last one is my personal favorite, but I digressed. We were talking about Zoom and its vulnerabilities. Now, a lot of us are and will be spending a lot of time on Zoom and other video conferencing platforms. So here's a few tips to keep your browsing safe and Johnny Sins free. One, keep your meeting passwords unique, always. Two, do not share meeting information on social media. Should be obvious. And three, always log in using a web browser if possible. Happy Zooming! And now on to less graphic news. Last week, I shared an African COVID success story that is Senegal. And this week, I am stoked to share what is hopefully another win for the continent. Madagascar, the land of vanilla, gorgeous beaches, and King Julian, Original King Julian also claims to have a corona cure. Madagascan President Andre Rajolina last month launched a herbal remedy called COVID Organics that he claimed could prevent and cure the disease. The herbal tonic was developed by the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research and is made from the Artemisia plant that has a proven efficacy against diseases such as malaria. COVID Organics will be distributed for free among Madagascar's most vulnerable populations and at an extremely low price for the rest of the population. At the launch of the herbal tonic, the president was keen to stress that at the moment it is only being used as a prophylaxis, that is to mean for preventative purposes, but clinical studies are underway in Madagascar to see if it has any curative properties. Now, the WHO has come out to discourage people from using untested remedies, saying that Africans deserve to use medicines tested to the same standards as people in the rest of the world. To be honest, I am with the Malagasy people on this. Africans have been using traditional remedies since before the rest of the world knew we existed. And worst case scenario, COVID organics isn't a cure, but more of an immune booster. Doesn't sound too bad to me. The rest of the continent doesn't want to be left behind either. Congo, Guinea-Bissau, and Equatorial Guinea are all ordering COVID organics faster than an Instagram model getting new Fashion Nova outfits. Even our next door neighbor, President John Pombe Magufuli, who just last week was testing goats and papaya for coronavirus, is sending planes all the way down to Madagascar to get some of that herbal goodness. Fingers crossed it works because on this show, we love to see Africa winning. Lastly, Kim Jong-un has now entered the Guinness World Book of Records as the only person in history to survive a TMZ death announcement. News first broke that he was in critical condition after a heart surgery went wrong. And then on the 25th of April, TMZ broke the news that the North Korean leader had passed. Breaking news! The Supreme Leader is dead! Yes. Diana Ernestine Earl Ross was born in Detroit, Michigan. Wait, are we talking about the right Supreme Leader? Kim Jong-il has passed away. Right. The controversial North Korean leader is dead, and the world mourns. <laughs> Now, TMZ isn't your traditional, respectable news outlet. It's not CNN or Al Jazeera. You don't get hard-hitting, well-researched news delivered to you by handsome, middle-aged men who unfortunately play for the other team. Was good, Anderson. But if TMZ says you're dead, you're dead. They have such a reputation for breaking morbid news that they've even come under fire for reporting deaths before family members and close members of their deceased family even know it, which is disgusting. And it's also why no one really had cause to doubt that Kim Jong-un had exited the building. That was until Korean state media published photos of him reportedly opening a factory last Saturday. Reports are now surfacing that Kim faked his own death to weed out any traitors in his administration. If true, we have ourselves a real-life General Aladdin on our hands, and we must now 
now turn to creative genius Sacha Baron Cohen to tell us Kim's next move. American authorities are yet to authenticate the date and the location of the pictures and the video of Kim's factory opening ceremony. So the world is still pretty much 50-50. What do you think? Alive or dead? Hit us up in the comment section and we'll see you next week. Hey guys, welcome to Banter Buddies. My name is Justine. And I'm George. So Justine, mm -hmm. what stories are we covering today? Uh, I think there's a, it's a mixed bag. The first story, this one is very nice, you know. We begin in the Mara. You know, it, it always sounds well and I only say this story begins in the Mara. The so, Serengeti. <laughs> <laughs> I found the story like animals actually really enjoying the Mara. You know, there are no people. There's no one telling them what to do. They're popping champagne and Honestly, they're just living their best lives. Like they have all the freedom now to roam around. With yes. Them. No one is taking their pictures without consent to send to their parents and like to share selfies on Instagram anymore. And I think this is like a really lovely time for them. Yeah, also the parks management says that uh, littering has gone down, obviously, due to the reduction in the human population inside the park. So I guess that's a good thing. You know, uh, rhinos don't have to wear our yogurt caps as hats. So that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah, and I think maybe they'll get to keep their horns this time. Maybe, just maybe. maybe. All you can do is hope and pray. Yeah. I think one downside to that is that we'll miss out on the spectacular migration because mm -hmm. they say it's happening in a month's time. The migration already happened. What do you mean? What do you mean it already happened? They say it's in a month's time. Yeah, see the migration from Eastly to South Sea God and South Sea. damn, Justine, you're being serious. Yeah, this is a serious news outlet, come okay. on. No, like, I, I, I have nah, to. I get you, I get you. But that's the only thing I, I think we'll miss out on because I wish someone just had, you know, fly a drone over, capture this captivating experience and stream it for us to see. I think I'd, I'd like some of that. Oh, that would be very nice. Also, when the whole COVID-19 thing started, I used to hear that they had hand sanitizers on the, at the entrance of the parks. And I was like, why do we need sanitizers at the park's entrance? Like, so that you can be COVID free when you're petting a lion. My name's Joe Exotic and this is Sarge. <laughs> anyway, let's just move on. I like to move it. That is terrible. Please stop your dad joke. The second story uh, I found really interesting is in the Philippines. So the government is had, having a really hard time getting people to stay at home and like just to en enforce curfew and lockdown rules. So instead of using government officials, like going in their professional uniforms, they're using movie villains to stop them from kind of interacting with each other, which I think is like really smart. The one particular movie villain they're using is Darth Vader. From Star Wars? Yes, that guy. May the fourth be with you guys. Just, just, that I, was like how many days ago? I felt like I had to say it. I don't even know what day or month. <laughs> don't even watch Star Wars through enough about this. So, you have accepted the truth. Yeah, that would work. I mean, scary. It's like almost scare tactics when yeah. you see such a villain. What what villain would you want like to deliver a, a COVID-19 relief package to you? Thanos would be like a, a great guy to do the job. I am inevitable. He will threaten everyone with like a finger snap. Like, you, if you guys don't stay home, I will like snap my finger and all of you will no longer be here. And which is also like an upside to that cause maybe half of COVID-19 just disappears. I'm gonna enjoy it. Very, very much. Or maybe he may kill the wrong people and then all the people with COVID might remain. It's a risk we have to take anyway. 100%. I think Thanos is great, but what villain would you... I don't even think there's a question here that's the best villain to deliver. Bane from Dark Knight Rises. First of all, he has the, the mask. Yeah. You know, I don't know how effective it would be against COVID. Yeah. But yeah, and also the voice, the... I love that one line even quotes. You think darkness is your ally? Oh, you think darkness is your ally? Just delivering anything in that tone would be perfect. That's scary enough. I feel like I should leave the studio to you now. I mean, I have never been told scary as a compliment, but I'll take it. The third story that I found really interesting, this happened a couple of months back, but it's still happening, so I don't think it's completely relevant. People in Somalia are using Dr. Hyena to treat mental illnesses, such as depression and anxiety, which I think is very innovative, especially during this COVID-19 crisis. What do you mean, Dr. Hyena? That's no. his name. That's not the name of a person. It's an actual hyena that they caught and they're using <laughs> to treat. How do they use it to treat? mental illnesses, and I'm not talking about mental illnesses, I just, their situation is kind of funny. So they are scaring the mental illness out of you. I feel like Tim Murphy's rebranding. 
Yeah, like you guys are doing really good. I'm very proud of you. We're in the big leagues now. <laughs> but you know, to be serious for a moment, they, they say the World Health Organization says there's only three trained psychiatrists in Somalia and the hyena is one of them. So I see how people would choose Dr. Hyena as an alternative. The only thing I'm scared about is, can you imagine being in the waiting room and then a nurse tells you, uh, the doctor will be with you shortly. And in two minutes, someone comes in, like doing with a hyena into a life. That would scare the COVID-19 out of me. 100%. So I guess that works. Yeah. Also, I had that one session with Dr. Hyena goes for $10, which is like a thousand bob here in Kenya. Usually a, a session would cost you anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000 or 10,000 shillings. And that's like a lot of money. So this is- So you'd rather opt just for the hyena. Yeah. yeah. Way to go, fatal attraction. So what kind of stories have you come across over the course of this week? There's one, I don't know whether to call him a researcher, and sorry, I forgot his name, but he says that there's a second wave of locusts coming, and it's actually more severe than the first. What? I, I don't want to say I don't, I don't care, but like, really, can we tell the locusts to chill for a moment? We're dealing with a whole pandemic here. It's like when you're, maybe, God forbid, you're in, you're in an accident, and then bodies are scattered anywhere, everywhere and you're lying there bleeding everywhere and someone comes and tells you, oh, excuse me, sir, your loan has been denied. Like, bro, I'm looking for my kneecaps right now. I don't care about the loan. That's how I feel with the locusts. Yeah, that's, that's a little extreme, George. Your analogy is way over the top. But I've been thinking, like, as much as we're worried about locusts, did you see this story where murderous hornets are actually going to the US from Asia? Murderous hornets? Yes. And I think I was very grateful because they're skipping their Africa tour. You know, they're keeping that world tour music, musician energy. Like Beyonce just flying over Africa and yeah. doing world tour. Yeah, the beehive is really changing. The second interesting story I came upon was that traces of COVID-19 have been found in men's semen. So coronavirus is becoming an STI now. I don't know, maybe. Maybe it's just a plan to hike up condom prices. But don't you think like men are the weakest link at this point? Like last week I said testicles make you more vulnerable. Uh, this week it's now found in semen. Like you guys will just like obliterate yourselves. I'm, I'm beginning to understand why war is relevant. Yeah, I think we are the weaker sex. Let's just put it that way. You admit it. So the second interesting story I came upon is has to do with Elon Musk. I mean, he and his partner Grimes were blessed with a baby boy, bouncing baby boy. I don't know why people say bouncing. It's like doctors do this when they deliver them and then catch. Don't they do that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought, I thought that's what they do because usually it has to have originated. Like maybe they bounce you off the table. Maybe, I don't know. To see if you'd like be a productive human being or something. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the thing that everyone was talking about was how the name, the boy's name. The name of the boy is X A E. Like an A E, which is one letter. Yeah, which is one letter, but it's pronounced as Ash. And then A hyphen one two. You know what? He's a white kid. I'll just call him Bryce or Chad or whatever. What would you do if you're like a substitute teacher and you see that name? I'll tell him to get out of my class. What? Like, go tell your parents to give you an actual name and then come back. I don't have time to solve equations. Uh, George, present. Uh, Justin, present. Uh, Soul for X, <laughs> <laughs> present. Do you know Elon Musk actually has six other kids? I, are you talking about Teslas? Does he call his no, Teslas no. cars <laughs> kids? Sorry. No, George. <laughs> that is so f stupid. So, he has six other kids. Yes, he has six other kids. And I don't know the names of these other kids, but I kind of want to know if all the others are also quadratic equations. <laughs> you know, if this math runs in the family. Yeah. yeah, he's a genius anyway. I can't fault him for naming whatever he wants to name his kids. I mean, you call Justin, which is a boy's name. How dare you? I'm sorry. You told me that in privacy, so. Yeah, like, why are you putting my business out? for everyone to see. Maybe the E at the end of Justin makes it feminine at yes. least. Okay. Shall we wind up with uh, what is happening today? Because I did not even take a hot shower. I was not able to take a hot shower today. This last story is actually affecting everyone out there. Kenya Power and Nairobi Water are doing a collab. <laughs> the 
they've decided that none of us will have electricity or water. They just told us we are sorry. You know that major song, Maji Mekatwa, Stime Mekatwa. Maji Mekatwa, Stime Mekatwa, Hakuna Tofauti na Kuishi Kwa Kichaka. That's exactly how we are all living. Yeah, plus, I think the water is so important, especially COVID-19 time, because we need to wash our hands after every 20 seconds or whatever, yeah. and without water, I mean. Do you think it will be appropriate if I start showering with sanitizer? If you can afford it, I mean, as long as you don't drink it like Trump people. To me, it's the most exciting thing you can talk about, right, Joni? Right? What if I catch on fire? Are you not even concerned for my safety, like, in any way? When you catch on fire, how do you catch on fire? Because sanitizer is actually flammable. It has alcohol. Do you shower with matchboxes? You're like scrubbing your boot with matchsticks, Amma. <laughs> Plus, there's no sparks from electricity since we don't have power. So I don't see how you catch fire from that. But w- what if I go out in the sun? I think that's <laughs> it for today, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. This has been Banta Buddies. My name is George. And I'm Justine. See you guys next week. Bye. Thank you.